Hello, welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 1 to 1 of ASP.NET video tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss about controlling ASP.NET caching in code. In part 119, we discussed about the basics of caching and in part 120, we discussed about caching multiple responses for a single web form. In both of these videos, we discussed about controlling caching within the web form HTML using the output cache directive. In this video, we'll discuss about controlling caching in code. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's quickly see how we have used the output cache directive to cache the web form. So obviously, I'm going to print the server time and to display the server side time, I'm going to use a server side label control and let's use two HTML breaks and then print the client time. So client time and to retrieve the client side time we need to use JavaScript code so I'm going to specify the script tag and specify the type as text slash JavaScript. So to retrieve the client side time we can use the date function that's available in JavaScript and then to print the date uh, the date and time that's returned by the date function we use the document objects write method okay so this piece of JavaScript code that we have here should retrieve the client side time and print it on the web browser uh, whereas if we wanted the date and time on the server we can retrieve that using C sharp code I mean that's the date and time um, class using now property that's going to return the current date and time on the server let's go ahead and convert that to string since we want to display that uh, within the label control so I'm going to set the text property of the label control to that but then I'm going to append you know some static text to that as well just to specify you know that the static text this page is cached by the server at whatever date and time that it is going to be cached. Alright, so now let's see how to use the output cache directory. In fact, we have used this in the previous sessions as well. So quickly, let's specify the output cache directive. So output cache directive has got two mandatory attributes. The first one is the duration, which controls how long this web form is going to be cached. For example, let's say I want to cache this web form for the next 30 seconds. I'm going to specify 30 there. And then I want to cache only one response of this web form. So I'm going to use vary by param attribute for that. And I'm going to set that to none. So I basically want to cache only one response of this web form. And then we haven't discussed about this location attribute. So we are going to use that as well. Uh, basically, what is the significance of this location attribute? Now, you know, whenever we request a web form, obviously that gets uh, processed on the server. Since we are using the output cache directive, that response is going to be cached. Okay, so that cached response, where does that get stored? Okay, uh, this basically there are three locations where we can store the cached responses. It could be on the web server or on the client or in between these two, there are also proxy servers. So we can also store that cache response on a proxy server. Okay, so basically these are the three locations where we can store a cached response on the web server, client, or on the proxy servers. Okay, so to control by default, basically ASP.NET is going to store the cached response at any available location. But if you want to control that, we can make use of this location attribute of the output cache directive. So let's say, for example, I want to store the cached response on the server and client. I can specify the location as server and client. Okay, so now let's go ahead and run this. So obviously, this web form is going to be cached for the next 30 seconds. So look at this. It's actually cached at 19.31.21. So look at that. The client time changes, but not the server side time. So 19.31.29. So this is going to be cached for the next 30 seconds and after 30 seconds is elapsed, you know, the web form will get reprocessed and that response is going to be cached for another 30 seconds. So at the most, this web form will be reprocessed every 30 seconds. And we have seen how to cache the web form using the output cache directive. Now let's see how to achieve exactly the same thing using code. Okay, so let me delete that from there. Let's flip to the web form and I want to programmatically control caching. 
Okay, let me paste this directive there so that we have a reference of it just to compare. Okay, now if I want to programmatically cache this, I can use the response objects cache property. Okay, so when I'm sending the response back to the client, you know, what do I want to do? I want to cache. Okay, so I'm using the cache property. The most important thing to notice here is, uh, look at this. When I hover my mouse over the cache property, look at what it's returning back. It's returning an HTTP cache policy object back. So that's the object that we use to control caching in code. This HTTP cache policy object that's returned by the cache property of the HTTP response class contains all the property, I mean members, which are similar to the attributes uh, you know of this output cache directive for example let's say I want to set the duration to 30 seconds so how do I do that programmatically so response dot cache which is going to return that HTTP cache policy object it has got the set expires property so I can basically set uh, you know at what time is the cache going to expire programmatically using this method now look at this this method is expecting a date time to be passed so how do I specify 30 seconds I'm going to use the date time object so date time dot now is going to give us the current date and time so to the current date and time add seconds how many seconds I want to cache it for 30 seconds so this line here is similar to setting duration is equal to 30 on the output cache directive okay so we have specified the duration then how do I specify vary by param very straightforward it's exactly the same thing so response dot cache which is going to again return the HTTP cache policy object and then it has got this property vary by params and look at this vary by params of none we are setting vary by params to none how do we do that programmatically so I can specify vary by params of none and we will set that to true so this line here is equivalent to vary by param is equal to none and finally we want to specify the location okay and to do that the response dot cache dot there's a method called set cacheability and if you look at this method this method takes a parameter of type HTTP cacheability so what is HTTP cacheability it's an enum which is going to list us so when we were using this location attribute it was actually listing all the locations that are available similarly this HTTP cacheability enum is going to list all the locations that are available so basically we want to uh, cache the response on server and client so I'm going to choose server and private okay which means server and client so indicates that the response is cached look at the help there um, indicates that the response is cached at the server and at the client okay so obviously now these three lines of code are actually similar to using these three attributes on the output cache directive okay so let's save that let's go ahead and run that plus control F5 when the web form renders you should see that it should be cached so this web form is cached at 1935.31 so look at that the server side time doesn't change but the client side time keeps changing so how long this web form is going to be cached it's going to be cached for the next 30 seconds okay so 1935.31 if we add 30 seconds at around 1936 this should be cached. So 1935, 55, 59. So in the next two seconds, look at that 1936.03, 1936 So since the duration has expired, the cache, you know, the, the cache response is removed from the cache. When we send the request to the web server at that point of time, it's going to reprocess that web form, send that back to the uh, client, and then it's going to also cache a response, um, you know, on the web server and on the client okay so obviously we have seen how to you know control caching and code using the response objects cache property which is going to return us that HTTP cache policy object obviously these three lines of code are similar to the you know output cache declaration that we have here so obviously output cache attribute has got duration attribute which is similar to the set expires property of the HTTP cache policy object uh, along the same lines vary by param here and on HTTP cache policy it's again vary by param there location 
uh, on the output cache directive is equivalent to set cacheability uh, method on HTTP cache policy object. And remember, uh, the response.cache property returns this HTTP cache policy object. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.